right, hello everyone. Now today we're going to be doing something a little different. We're going to be creating a neural network from scratch using Python uh, without using any uh, machine learning libraries like TensorFlow or anything like that. We're going to just use, do it from scratch, right? Just with pure programming. Um, the only thing we're going to use is like numpy arrays, um, but that's just for um, doing, to make the multiplication and some of the math feel a little bit easier um, and to kind of store our data. So, all right, so without further ado, let's get started. Um, now, what I have up on the screen here is just a basic neural network, um, and it's just to kind of help us develop the program, right, because we're going to be using a lot of for loops and things like that. Um, so, all right, so here you have, we have our inputs over on the left, uh, so you can see we have a 10 and a 5, okay. Now, what's usually step one, right? So, step one of a neural network is usually to calculate the first neuron here, okay, right? So, and usually we calculate a value called z, right? So, how do we do that? So, we take our input, or 10, and I'll actually, you know what? I will write this out, right? So, now, now if you haven't seen my neural networking series, make sure you go check that out, because then you'll understand this, and this will be really a no-brainer. Uh, but I just want to speak to the neural network, so then we can then go program this in Python, because uh, that's the language we're going to be using. All right. So what we would do here, the first step is this, right? we got to calculate our first neuron in our hidden layer, of course, right? So it would be this. First, we want to calculate z for that neuron, right? Equals 10, which is our first input, times our weight, or w1. Remember, we're calculating the first neuron. So that's where these red lines are going to, right? So it would be 10 times our weight, w1, of 0.25 plus our input to our second input 5 times our w2 our second weight of 0.15 and then up here we said for this layer we're going to just use a bias of 1 so plus 1 okay so that is z now the result of that value z gets passed to our sigmoid function and i've wrote that below see here I've written that down in the corner just for reference right but again there are many different activation functions uh, the one we're gonna be using for this is sigmoid and they're kind of like plug-and-play uh, depends really on what you want to do uh, so for this we're gonna use sigmoid right so what you would do is you would take this result Z okay and then you'd pass that to your sigmoid function 1 over 1 plus e uh, e to negative z, right, exponent, um, yeah, and then that would be, the result of that sigmoid would be your activation for this first node, right, so that's the first step we're going to do, uh, we're going to, we're going to do this with programming in Python, so let's go ahead and do that, let's see what that would look like, all right, so let me drop this down, okay, here we are, I've just created a new Python file. The editor I use is PyCharm, but you can use whatever you want. Um, all right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna import NumPy as MP. Again, that's what's gonna hold our data. We're also gonna import pandas as oops, PD. Now pandas is what we're gonna use to import our data, right? Um, so that five and the 10 that you saw in the, uh, the previous screen I had up there, that would be our data, right? That's our input layer. That's our, that's our data, our data set. Okay. So now the first thing I like to do is I like to create, um, helper functions. So let's put a little comment here, helper functions. Um, the first one we're going to need, obviously we're going to need that sigmoid function. That, that I talked about. So, and that's going to take a value of z, right? And the reason why I create helper functions is because you do a lot of these steps over and over again, right? So you want to have functions to do that that you can just call. Um, so that's, that's why, but in case that wasn't clear. All right, so sigmoid. And again, we're going to return um, 1 over 1 plus mp.exp 
and then negative z. Okay, that's our sigmoid function. Now, the next function we want to create is to do that forward pass that I showed you, right? Where we multiply our input times our weights, pass it to our sigmoid, that gives us our activation, and then we do the same thing in the next layer, right? So we want to write, that's called feed forward, right? That's where we, we, we use our weights and we multiply them and we feed forward to get our eventual output, right? So let's create a function to do that, right? And that just to reiterate, right? We're gonna write a function here to calculate z, right? We're gonna we're gonna write a function to do this. So it's gonna for each, um, basically weight for each neuron, it's gonna loop through and do this. So let's write that. All right. So first thing we need, let's let's write this. Let's call this uh, feed forward. Actually, you know what? Feed forward. There we go. Okay. So this is gonna take our input. Right, and not and when I say input, input to the function, I don't necessarily mean input layer. That is true. This will be used uh, and take data from our input layer, but it's also going to be used for each calculating each layer. Right, so we'll call that A. Right, and I call this A because that is the activation. Right, so our input layer, the ten and the five, as you saw an example, that's just our data. Right, but it's treated the same way as the outputs of the next layer. Right. So, just to explain this, right? And again, if you haven't seen my series, go check that out. This will make sense, right? So, we took our input of 10, right? And our input of 5, right? Multiplied by the weights, added them together to get our output, our Z, right? Then we pass Z to our sigmoid. That gives us our output, or our activation A, right? Now, let's just say... Um, whatever, A is, I, I don't know what it is, but let's just say A is, I don't know, uh, 99, right? Actually, let me change the color. Let's say our A equals 99, right? Let's say that's what, we, that's what the result of our sigmoid is. I don't know what it would be in this case, but it doesn't matter, who cares, right? This A would then be used to calculate the next layer. So now when we wanna calculate this layer, okay, we would, it would be uh, 99 times our weight, W5 of 0.1, plus um, whatever the next, the, let's say, the, let's say the, uh, the next neuron down, the activation was, I don't know, 100, right? Plus 100 times our weight of 0.2, plus our bias again of 1, and that equals uh, our Z for this layer, right? So it's repeating. So hopefully that's clear, all right? So again, so A, that's going to be our input, and then our, obviously our weights, and then our bias. Right? Those are the values we need to calculate that. All right, so let's see. The next thing we need, um, so we need to know, we're going to do this using for loops, right? So we need to know how many neurons we have, how many input neurons and how many output neurons. Right, so again, going back to right, so here we have two, one, two input neurons, and then we also have two neurons here. Okay, so we need to know both of those. Okay, so we need to know how many neurons are coming in, how many are going out. Right, so we'll call this like a variable num of input neurons. I'll just be real explicit here number of input neurons. Right? And our input, that's going to be our a dot shape zero. Okay. That's going to, that's basically like, uh, so that's kind of like the number of zero is the first uh, dimension of our array, right? It's going to be like a two-dimensional array, right? It's going to store rows and columns, right? So we want to know how many rows we have. That's going to be how many neurons we have or how many inputs we have, right? Um, and then we need to know how many outputs, right? How many uh, activations do we need to calculate for, right? Uh, number of output neurons. And that's going to be w dot shape, right? We could use our weights for that. Um, okay, great. Now the next thing we want to do 
let's let's create our um, let's initialize these arrays that we keep talking about so we'll do z equals mp dot zeros and then we'll use so again we're, we're defining our two-dimensional array here so it's going to be the number output neurons comma one and then the activation is going to be empty. We're just going to initialize it to zeros because we're going to populate this when we do the math. Equals num of output neurons, comma one. Right. So z and a they're going to be the same. Right. But we're just going to create separate variables for that. All right. Now, the next thing we want to do is we need to have two for loops. So we need to have a loop to calculate the activation for each neuron in the layer. And then we need to calculate Z from the previous, because we're going to do this for each layer, right? Um, OK. So we need for n, let's call this, yeah. Another for loop for in range m of input neurons. So these are nested for loops. Now we're going to calculate z um, that's going to be our a Plus equals a a and x times um, w and x. And then the second position will be W, W index. Okay, great. All right. Now. All right, now let me explain this here. Um, okay, so this first loop, okay, this is a loop um, for each neuron uh, activation that we're trying to calculate, right? So let me move this a little bit. OK, there we go. So let me go back to our screen here, right? So we're trying to calculate. The first layer to calculate is this layer here, right, this middle layer. So for each, let me change colors here, right? So for each, so our, our, our first outer loop is for each of these neurons, okay? So now let's say we're on the first neuron, right? Now our nested loop will then need to calculate our input times our weights within this, right? So that's our nesting there. Hopefully that makes sense, right? And that's why we're, what you're seeing here. Right, Z for our A index, which would be in our, in our first pass, would be Z for this neuron, right? Equals, plus equals, because we're going to add stuff together. A, um, which is our input, right? Which in this case would be, um, let me go back, which in case this case would be 10, right? times our weight of one point uh, in this case w1 right plus 5 times our weight 0.15 right that's what this loop is doing here right and when you're finally done with all that it equals z right but it equals but don't forget it equals z for this one neuron then you go to the next um next round through the loop right 
So we're keeping track of that in obviously a, um, a list basically, right? So we're going to keep track of Z for each neuron. So in this case, we would keep track of Z for this neuron and Z for this neuron, right? And we keep that in our list, right? So hopefully that's clear what we're doing there. Okay. Right? And I'll just add a note here, right? So this is nest, nested loop um, to calculate Z, right? Which equals a times W, right? Or activation times our weight or input times our weight, whatever, however you want to refer to it, right? Okay. So now once we have Z for everything, Okay, so now we now remember we have our z's. So what's the next step that we calculate for our neuron? Remember, we're now we're going to break out of this nested loop. We already have z, so let's go back to our outer loop here, right? Where it's calculating for the neuron, right? So what do we need? Let's go back to our diagram here, right? Well, we need to pass z to our sigmoid activation. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. Um. Oh, actually, what am I saying? First, we need to add our bias, All right? So the bias is passed in here, okay? So we'll take, right, this is going to be easy. Z, all right, index, right, equals, or actually, sorry, plus equals and bias, um, again, for our same index, right? Which want to add the bias that was passed in, right? And and again, what's get passed in here? Don't be confused. I know you see me indexing B, and it's like, well, wait a minute, what is B, right? We we haven't got there yet, but B is going to essentially be another list, right? And that's why we're indexing it with these square brackets, okay? Right. So for calculating Z for neuron one, we need B for neuron one. B is going to be passed in, right? So anyway, okay. So moving on. So now that completes Z. Now our next pass in the loop, which, what, now that we have Z, we need to calculate our activations, right? So we initialized our activations for this layer. And, 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 and this, these parameters here, this Z, this A, as you can tell already, these are really just kind of temporary holdings, I guess you can call them, uh, just to make the code a little more, more clean. Um, all right, so let's calculate A. So A, again, at our current position, in the loop equals and we use our sigmoid function and then we'll pass z in our current position in the loop okay now point of this function is to feed forward um, for the next layer right so what are we going to return we're done with our loops right we've calculated our activation for this layer that was that was passed into us right so now we're going to return, uh, we'll return both, and you'll see why later. But the main thing we need to return is the activation, obviously, right? That's the main point when you are processing a neuron. The main output is, that is the activation, right? So we want to return A, all of A, right? So, And we'll also return Z, and we'll see why later on. But we'll return both. All right, so... That is our feed forward function. Um, I think I'm going to stop it here. Um, and then uh, we'll continue on in the next part of the series. Thank you for watching. All right, so that'll do it. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell. And also check out jamestechtips.com for more BI-related content. And thanks for watching.